why what's where am I going with this why would I why would I need to do that um, I get a lot of answers that uh, frankly you might have the same the same issue going on so I wanted to tell you about one particular um, uh, event that happened early in my life it was when my children were really really small and we had uh, it was with my first wife and she and I had moved out to Cedar Rapids Iowa and I was working at a printing plant there uh, I was a, a folder operator and I'm not sure if you know what a folder is I might flash a picture up on the on the screen so you can take a look at it but it's, it's a very uh, complex machine with lots of moving parts, and uh, it's very loud, and uh, it's heavy work, you know, picking up paper every day. I didn't mind it. It was what I did for a living at the time. And, you know, at the time, I was probably in my late 20s, late 20s, early 30s, and uh, we, uh, I would work... Uh, the second shift. I was 3 to 11, as many of you are probably aware. And they hired a guy to come in on the first shift. I didn't mind that because I really didn't want to work the first shift. I preferred the second shift um, so I could spend time with my kids during the day. But the thing was that um, they hired this young guy. And I say young. He was probably... 18 to 20 years old, right? So he wasn't a lot younger than me, but he was younger. And um, when uh, when he came in, uh, you know, he started running the machine. And the thing I noticed was that he was always running the machine as fast as it would go. In other words, he would come in and he would turn it on and he would turn it up to its, you know, if you can think in terms of, you know, of guitars, it would be up to an 11, right? But it, it, was, it was up as high, up pretty much as high as it would go. Well, when I would come in, I would turn the speed down. And the, the reason that I would do that was because I wanted to make, I wanted to make sure that I was producing as much as possible, right? Whereas he was trying to show off and run the machine as fast as possible, right? Which ended up causing these huge paper jams in the machine. And, and he would spend 15 or 30 minutes clearing paper out of the machine, resetting the machine to get it, it working again. And, um, you know, it went on like this for several months. And uh, one day I came in and... My boss said, well, we laid the guy off, right? And uh, I said, oh, well, wh why'd you do that? And he said, well, we, uh, we just don't have as much work now. And he said, but the funny thing was that um, the guy said, when, when they went and told him that he was going to be laid off, he said, well, why are you laying me off and not that, that big fat, that, that fat uh, old dude? Why aren't you laying him off? And my boss looked at him and said, well, because he makes the machine run better than you do, right? Uh, so uh, when, I, when I think back on that, and again, this is part of that whole introspection thing that I was, I was talking about, right? When I think back on that, I was kind of, I, was, I wasn't surprised at it that it happened to him because I knew that he, he you know, had a bad, had bad record as far as how much he was getting done every day. But what I felt like was, you know, that he thought that because I was older or because I was heavier, um, I couldn't do the job as well as he could, right? And so I felt like that was a, that was a, a call to action for me to lose some weight. Um, but it was also a call to action to understand why people kind of do what they do, right? And, and I felt like um, if I, in thinking about it, you know, in hindsight and looking at uh, the job and, and how I was doing it. My intent was to make it go as fast as I could while not uh, going so fast that it would 
cause problems, right? So, um, but his his intent was to show off how much faster he could run it than than I did. Which, if you think about it, leads you to a, leads you to a question: Why would he need to to show off? You know, maybe he was insecure about his position, which then led him to actually lose that position, right? So, you know, there are reasons why things happen, and there are, you know, but there are ways that you can get around it. You can try to be more self-assured um, and not try to uh, compete with your, with your fellow workers, Right. That's um, that's one series of things that I could get from that. Um, the other is, you know, a quality mindset. Right. So when we uh, when we work on things, we should have a quality mindset to make sure that we're doing them the right way, to make sure that we're constructing things in, in the right way. Um, just as a as an aside, I, I now work in software engineering. And so the construction of software in, in this engineering field is, is a much more demanding kind of um, uh, detail-oriented thing. And so it's, it, it becomes much harder. There's a lot more variables involved in it than, than working with your hands and, and working with machines. I enjoyed working with machines. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I enjoy the the intellectual stimulation of being able to, to actually uh, create something or to, to create value from software, right? So, um, and I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of clients who, who are pleased with what I do. Some are not. And, you know, I'll be the first one to admit that there are some that, you know, have not been happy with, with the work that I've done. And sometimes... You know, I over-engineer things. And again, this is part of my, you know, thinking back and trying to be, you know, uh, introspective to try and make myself better. Do, do you, do you who are watching me, do you, are you introspective? Do you try and go back and, and relitigate things in your mind or tr at least try and figure out what you did wrong or why things were the way they were? I'm pretty sure you do. I'm pretty sure you do. Um, we all have those moments, those, those things that are, uh, are, are, you know, questionable in our minds. Why did we do something the way that we did? And, you know, if, if you feel like this is something that resonates with you, please leave a comment, uh, in the, in the, the, uh, site. And also if you, if you, like this this video and you you feel like you you're getting something from it please like it and uh, and subscribe to the channel uh, it's important it, it helps us uh, you know understand what people want to see and how they want to see it so you know there's lots of there's lots of uh, pieces and parts uh, in your life that you can think back on and say well okay so you know this is why I did that, right? I have a, um, I have a best friend. Uh, he's been my best friend for 50 years, if you can believe that. And we, you know, when he went off to college, I, I missed him, but I didn't go off to college right away. And that was one of the things I always felt like I was missing out or like I was um, not doing you know, as well as my peers because they had all gone off to college when they were, you know, young and everything. But I was working. I was an apprentice, and then I was working in, in printing. And I did that for about 10 years. And I did eventually go back to college, and I eventually got my, my degree at a later, you know, later in life, um, which I have to tell you, again, you know, everything seems to be about age, uh, when we start talking about these things, but it's true. Um, when I was going to college, uh, I was going to the University of South Carolina, which I'm sure you didn't even realize I was from the South. Uh, but that aside, um, I was 
going to the University of South Carolina. And in my classes, I was always the oldest guy in the class. I was always, there was always 18 and 20 year olds. And at the time I was going back to finish my degree, um, I was in my, you know, I was in my uh, early 30s. And I didn't end up finishing my degree until uh, I was uh, in my early 40s. And that was okay. Um, I felt like, and the one, the reason I said that was okay, because when I first started, when I was 21 years old, I went back, I went to college, um, I made horrendous grades, horrendous grades. I just was not paying attention. I just wanted to party all the time. What a surprise, right? Um, but what I found out was that, you know, the older I got, um, the more attention I paid to what I was doing. And, and some, sometimes I say, well, it's because I was paying for it myself, right? Um, I was paying for school myself. I was, I was doing what I had to do to get my degree. Um, so I like to say, well, it was because I, because I was paying for it. But it was also because I felt a responsibility to do everything I needed to do. And I know each of you out there, you know, you feel that responsibility too, right? Uh, when you're taking your kids to school or whatever, you have a responsibility and you're, you're taking care of that responsibility every day, right? And that's part of being a good person and being a forthright person is to, is to take care of those responsibilities. But the, from the standpoint of, you know, the uh, going to college, I felt like getting good grades was, was what I was there for. That was my job, was to get good grades. And I did. Uh, you know, I missed being a summa cum laude by like two-tenths of a, of a point, mainly because I, at the last, the last um, uh, online course I took, I got a B instead of an A. So, you know, it, it, it happens. And it also was, of course, because I'd gotten horrible grades early on in my career, and I, I brought those over with me. Um, but, you know, the reason I went back to college, and, and some, of you may, some of you may be watching this and you say, well, you know, I'm doing just fine being a carpenter. Or I'm doing just fine doing, you know. And you know what? I agree with you. I, I don't look down on anyone for doing, you know, hard work every day being being you know a carpenter or a craftsman in fact not only do i not look down on you i admire you right because you're doing something that's awesome right um, being a craftsman but i went back because my i've had a boss at the time who said you know you should get go ahead and get your your degree not necessarily because you have to have a degree to do IT, which is what I was doing at the time. Not because you have to have an, a degree to do this. We hired you without an I, without a, a, a degree, but because it shows people that you had the wherewithal to finish something, that you that you you know you persisted long enough to finish something. And so, you know that kind of that kind of spoke to me. That was uh, that was something that. I absolutely understood and I absolutely felt like it was something that I needed to take care of. I needed to I needed to do that. Early in my life I felt like uh, you know as my friends were graduating college and I wasn't and I was just working, you know, um, I felt a little in, inferior or insecure about it. But the older I got, the more I realized, you know, just because you have a degree doesn't mean you're going to be successful, right? And I think that's something that a lot of young men and young women don't quite get, right? Um, there are other pathways to being successful. And that's why I say I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, really a fan of craftsmen, uh, especially people who work with wood, right? I love to work with wood and, you know, and, and, but I am nowhere near craftsmen uh, on the, on the woodworking 
realm, although one day I hope to be. Uh, when I retire, I think I'll start working in wood and, uh, because it's, it's really a satisfying thing. If, you, if you've never worked with wood, you should try it sometime. You really should. Um, it's a very satisfying thing uh, to put something together with wood and, and see it come together. And in some ways, I, I feel the same way about software. When I'm, when I'm working with the, the software that I, that I configure and, and use, you know, it, it, when it comes together and it's working correctly, it feels like you've, you know, you just, you know, uh, carved the Mona Lisa, right, or something, right? You, it's, 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 it's a very satisfying feeling. But on the other hand, uh, when, you, uh, when you don't, when it doesn't come together and it doesn't work right, it's very frustrating, right? Um, I very seldom with wood ever have, a, have, a, have the, the kind of frustration working in wood that I do with, with software. Um, just because, you know, wood is patient. Wood is there. And you can take your time with it and you can get it right. And if it's not the way you want it, you just, you know, tear it apart and put it back together again the way you want it, right? Sometimes you can't do that with, with uh, you know, software and, and being an engineer. But you, you tell me, do you feel, do you out there in YouTube land, do you feel that, uh, you know, craftsmen are, are the way to go or that apprenticeships are something that we should we as a as a country should be uh, focusing on right focusing less on uh, on you know getting degrees uh, and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get degrees when we could just as soon have an apprenticeship and be productive citizens uh, and I, and you'll you'll probably tell me, well, you know, that, that's a great idea. However, you know, people look down on pe on on people who do you know manual labor, who do you know, craftsmen, who do uh, you know do wood, and, you know, build houses and that sort of thing. Uh, and I would tell you that that if you've ever had a house built for you, you don't wouldn't look down on those people. They really do. A, they really are very talented with what they do. Some of them are jack legs. I'll give you that. Um, but there's a lot of, there's 99% of the people who do work on your house or who uh, build houses are, are craftsmen. They, they really care about the work they're doing and they try to do it the right way. Um, and that's one thing that, uh, you know, that I, I feel is really very important as well, which is that, you know, you should always assume positive intent, right? So what, what I mean by that is if you have, if you have a conversation with, um, let's say you have a credit card company or a credit or you have an auto loan where they send you a, a, a late payment uh, notice and it's, you, you know that you're not late. You know you haven't been late. But when you get on the phone with the with the customer service person, do you act angry? Are you are you upset with this customer service representative? Are you trying to do for them? Are you trying to, to make them feel bad about it? Right? Is there a reason why you want to make them feel bad about it? Is it because you feel you know feel upset because you got a late payment notice that you shouldn't have? Um, Try to assume positive intent, right? When that that it was just a mistake, and I'm contacting you to try and straighten it out, and I appreciate your help, and that will go a long way uh, towards making your life less stressful. And I think um, again, the older I get, the more I realize how stress is directly linked to attitude. So when you're stressed out, it's because you're angry and you're upset and you're, there's things going on in your life you just really can't stand. But try not to try not to let stress, you know, try not to let your anger cause stress, cause high blood pressure, right? 
Uh, I'm not saying that you need to be Zen and, you know, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm talking about, you know, conceptualize in your mind what these, if you were on the other end of this conversation with, you know, and you worked for the credit card company or you worked for the, for the auto loan people and you said, and you had someone call up, right? You're not, you're just there to help them. You're not there to, 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 you know, talk about them or to give them a hard time. You're there to, to fix what's wrong. And, you know, you on the other end as the customer need to have some concept of what you would feel like if you were answering the phone, right? Um, tell me what you think. Leave a comment. I'm, I'm fine with, with comments. Um, don't want angry ones though, right? Um, don't want angry ones or ones that use foul language. We, we, don't, we don't allow that, but, um, but I would like your comments on what you think helps to relieve your stress. Uh, I would like to know what is it that you do to make your life easier to get along with or people around you's life better by what you do for them. Um, you know, the one, one thing that my wife always tells me is she said, you know, uh, her family is, is very, uh, is very focused on, you know, keeping secrets and, and always, uh, you know, angry and, and yelling and lots of things going on. She said, you know, the thing I, I really love about you is that that's not how you are, right? You, we don't, we don't have to yell and scream at one another all the time and, and getting, you know, it's not that we don't get in disagreements. We have disagreements, you know, on a fairly regular basis, but it doesn't make it, us being in disagreement doesn't mean we don't love each other or we don't, you know, concern ourselves with, you know, making the other one happy, right? It's just that we disagree on something, right? We can, dis we can agree to disagree without making it into a federal case. Um, so, you know, my, my, my point in coming on here was to really discuss with you some things, you know, I've found in my life that have led me to believe that I can, I can improve my life immensely, improve other people around me's life immensely by changing my attitude, by changing the way I look at things and trying to be, and trying to be introspective and become a better person. Um, and you know it, it's I know it's not easy. It's it's never it's never easy to be to 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 get a hold of your anger and to tamp it down and to figure out well why am I getting angry, right? There are a lot of things that make me angry. A lot of things that um, that get underneath my skin. But I have to I have to put them all in context, right? I think context is a great thing. So. Anyway, I, I've rambled on long enough, and I thought that uh, I would share it with you, and I want you to uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, if you would, and please come back, and I'll probably be on doing more rambling. So, thank you very much. And before I go, I do want to, uh, to uh, tell you that I'm glad that you could come to my channel and you could come and visit with us and that we really hope to see you again. So please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.